like making me mentally stronger. I just wanted to share that experience and that love and that passion for this with other people. Mm -hmm. like, I think yeah, that was like, awesome. and, and connect with more people. Cause it's been awesome to connect with more people who also feel passionately about this sport and this space. So mm -hmm. that was really like the idea behind it more than like, I want to make it necessarily about me, but making it about me sort of gives me content always. If I want to like help promote this brand yeah. and this methodology yeah. and this idea, like I have, I continue to have these, ha having my own, like a station where like I have myself as the center, I can always make more content. I'm always available for me. Mm -hmm. Where That's like awesome. I relied on other now, people. Yeah. Never yeah. know if I were yeah, available. I, true. True. And so did you ever think about like doing like the, like a podcast or was it just like, I'm going to just do a straight vlog and like, that's it. Um, I've thought about a lot of things. A podcast would be really cool. I do enjoy talking, but it, the format I have now, I feel like just allows a lot of flexibility. Like whatever yeah. I want to do, I can do that. And because I don't like, I don't have any sponsorships. I can't do sponsorships at my job as a journalist. But I don't think I would want to do sponsorships anyway, because not having sponsors allows me to do whatever I want with no one to answer to. And I don't have to hit any specific metrics for anyone or anything. Yeah. I can just produce the content I want to produce the way I want to produce it. Mm -hmm. I hear you. So um, what when did you realize like like I can imagine what your first video was. You're probably like cringing the whole time and you'll put it on YouTube. You're like, Oh my God, like they should have said this. I should have said this. But um, like, when did you start seeing an uptick in the views for your YouTube channel? Um, I don't, well, I don't know if I ever really like cringe that way. I do remember having that experience when I first started doing media stuff when I was mm -hmm. like in high school. Yeah. But by the time I was doing YouTube, um, I mean, there was a certain amount of like that feeling, but I've just been, broadcasting and watching myself and listening to myself for so long at this point that it's like, I don't have that same reaction. I'm just used to it. I also mm -hmm. feel for me, it's made me more comfortable with who I am. I don't look at photos or like someone takes a picture and I'm like, Oh no, delete it. I'm like, that just looks <laughs> like me. I've, I've seen myself so much. I've, I know what yeah. I look like. I'm very aware and feel very comfortable with it. And I also think CrossFit has contributed to that too, which is feeling better in my body. Mm -hmm. Um, but I really noticed an uptick. I started with an open series, which I think helped get like right away some views because people are doing the CrossFit open workouts. I didn't, now I publish my whole open workout and do them immediately. That's not what I did the first year because I just didn't have, I just didn't know as much about what would do well. Yeah. But just posting bits of that. Like I was getting hits because people were interested in those workouts. Like I picked a time that was going, I was going to do something that was searchable. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that helps a lot is doing something that people can search. And then actually Andrew Hiller made that video on me just a few months into me doing CrossFit. He made like a whole video. Like he found, he was, it was during his time when he was making a video every single day. So he needed a lot of content. <laughs> yeah. and I was doing like, I did a live stream wrapping up semifinals or previewing semifinals, one or the other. And he happened to find my live stream. Like he just happened to open up his phone. He was looking for content for the next day, typed in CrossFit. I happened to be live. He's like, you had like two viewers. Um, and he came in, he like put the bats in the chat. And I was like, oh no, am I in trouble? Um, <laughs> but then he made like a whole video and it was actually like that video was pretty complimentary and um, it was a good video and it was nice of him. I didn't ask him to do any of that. He just happened to stumble upon my video and felt that he wanted to promote my content because he liked what I was doing. And then I got a huge bump from that. And then my next like really big bump was at the CrossFit games in 2022 when they announced Tia was retiring, but then like not retiring. Yeah. The, I, I made a video about that the night it happened. I, that video got 23,000 views and I am sitting on a toilet in that video with the toilet closed, but it was filmed. <laughs> of course. Yeah. But it was filmed in the bathroom of my hotel room because the lighting in, in the hotel room was so yellow, like orange, that it mm -hmm. made me look like an Oompa Loompa. So I realized the lighting in the bathroom was better. So I went and just like sat in the bathroom and recorded this YouTube video. <laughs> and 
on Tia's potential retirement. And it was also Rich Froning's retirement. So it was like a video about like, you know, the goats potentially retiring. Yeah. Um, and it got like 23,000 views and I got so many subscribers. I wasn't even monetized yet because I just hadn't reached that threshold. But that video sort of pushed me over the edge because I think the next morning after that happened, everyone was searching that. And I had made this video in the bathroom of my hotel room. And Which is it, crazy. Yeah. yeah. And it did really well. And that those are like my moments that really picked up traction on my channel. But now like I do this open series last two years where I publish the entire workouts. I do them on Thursday right after they're mm. announced. Yeah. And then I do like a little voiceover over them and just give my score and let everyone go and chase it. And that always does really well. And I always get a bump from that. So that's like something that's continuous though. Like I can keep producing that every year when that happens. So that's a pretty cool thing about CrossFit too, is the community continues to grow. More people get introduced to CrossFit, more people do the open and more people see my content and hopefully I can help them uh, get through the workouts. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And I know you did have one video of your love for rad shoes. Cause I, mm -hmm. yeah, I guess like you did a, a box opening. I think it was like the, per, uh, the purple ones. It was like yeah. the black and purple ones. Yeah. So, yeah. So do you, do you see those kind of videos as well? Getting like some decent views for that? Yeah. Especially I did a couple, I've done a couple of videos on the rad shoes and I have some that are like older that still get hits all the time because people are searching the shoes and then I have these videos that have done well, you know, over years, they keep populated on YouTube. The algorithm is pretty good on YouTube. Yeah. Um, but like, that's just me talking about something that I really like, like no one's paying me. I'm not, there's no sponsorship. The shoes, I paid the full price for them. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I got no discount, no deal, uh, struggle to even get my size and the color I want, but I like the shoes and, uh, and I feel like also the fact that it really is my authentic opinion on them. No, I don't have any sponsorships. Nobody's influencing me. I am just, like, I just want to tell you, like all of you people that I like this and I think you mm -hmm. might like it too. And I think that authenticity also helps those videos continue to do well. But I think it's a little bit different when someone comes out and is like, Rad sent me these shoes for free and I like them. Um, <laughs> versus yeah, someone- Yeah, of course you're going to be biased the whole time, so- mm -hmm. Yeah, like versus me saying I spent $150 on the, uh, these shoes and then I waited for the long shipping and uh, then I had to pick them up at the post office because of the weird shipping because mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's a sign to like, get them to get them. So uh, <laughs> I went through all that and I still like the shoes. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I've, I've never worn a pair, so I'm, I'm mainly like a Metcon guy. So okay, I like the Metcons. The Metcons is what I wore pre rads mm -hmm. and then i did wear the nobles for a little bit they're not the best shoe no 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 <laughs> Th those are my launch shoes now so yeah i got i did get those for free not for like doing media but i used to volunteer at the crossfit games i think mm -hmm. i volunteered three years at the crossfit games and one set regionals back when regionals was a thing and you got shoes for volunteering like three days or more yeah. so i got shoes free shoes from that so I've had a couple pairs of uh, Nobles from that and some pairs of Nanos from that too. I've worn all the shoes, almost, yeah. not, almost, not all of them, but I've worn a lot of the shoes. Yeah. So, so since you're, you have all those shoes, which one is your favorite one of all? I mean, the Rads are my the favorite. Rads. Yeah. And like, that's why I keep buying them, even though I could buy the Metcons and get two pairs for the price I'm paying for like a, on sale for the yeah. price I'm pairing for the Rads. But I just like the rads for pretty much everything, which is the convenience of them. Like the Metcons, I liked for some things, but not as much for others. Like they're not great running shoes, but like the rads I can do running workouts in and like, I still like them. I don't feel like I need to have multiple shoes for multiple things. I don't mind lifting in them. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I like them. They don't pay me. I just hope hey. to get, I hope to get the color I want when they drop new shoes on Thursday, to be totally honest. I, yeah, I've heard <laughs> some of the colors that they're having are like outrageous. Yeah, they're really they have really cool colorways and they don't uh they they don't restock. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you kind of gotta get and that, that's part of the novelty of it. It's also part of the fun of it. I think it's kind of cool that like it's a smaller company and they uh do small batches of shoes versus so many of these companies that are just huge. And I do feel like Nike has sort of went out on CrossFit a little bit. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> I, I for a long time, like when Reebok with their contract is going to be over, I'm like, okay, get ready for the, the Nike CrossFit games. Like I really thought it was going to be Nike. And then well, all of a sudden, like, now. yeah, yeah, it, oh, don't, I don't, I don't know. We'll see what happened with that. But like, then the <laughs> Noble, then Noble came and I'm like, yeah, who? I know, I know it's a Massachusetts company, but I'm like, who is this? Yeah. So well, now it's a Tom Brady company. Yeah. I don't think he, he doesn't really do good with touching with other people's companies. So yeah, we'll, we'll like, see how that goes. Yeah. Like FTX. Yeah. Let's just yeah. leave that alone. So, but, uh, I don't even but, think Go Ruck is technically the title sponsor of the CrossFit Games. Like, I don't think there is a title sponsor this year. Which is I don't insane. Think it says Go Ruck on it. I think it just says CrossFit Games on the logo. Yeah. Well, I mean, everyone's getting the Go Ruck shoes, the Go Ruck, like, it, um, and I think they're getting like North American apparel or something like that. Or like, I don't even know if it's oh, a Go it's Ruck like apparel. Northern it's, Spirit apparel. Yeah, that's it. Doing, doing the apparel for semifinals. I don't know if they're going to be doing it for the games, but I know they're doing it for semifinals. I don't know if we know who's doing the apparel for the games yet. Maybe go ruck. I mean, maybe go ruck wasn't ready. Yet. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that's an interesting change. Um, the, they were really pumping up those go ruck shoes though, during the semifinals coverage. Oh yeah. The of course runners. they were. Yeah. But, nope. uh, chasing no, them, like they're not rough at all. He kept on, <laughs> kept on saying that. <laughs> <They're> very <laughs> comfortable. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. But um, what? So like <laughs> I I'm not gonna like them. I I know it. So um, but so with, with your YouTube channel, I know you're like recently new to it. So mm -hmm. what what's the goal of the channel? Are you looking to go like be a full time YouTuber or like what's no, the? No, I don't think okay. I have any interest in being a full time YouTuber. I don't really have a lot of interest in working for myself. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, it's nice to be employed by someone else and to not have to worry about where my next paycheck is coming from true yeah. or my health insurance um i think like if i was ever at the point where i could my youtube is very successful and i can work part-time that would be awesome um but i think I'd, i i enjoy my job my actual profession um mm -hmm. youtube is definitely a passion project and i love sharing my passion and i love other people enjoying watching it and uh, supporting me and the conversation I get to have through that, the people I've gotten to meet, like meeting you today. Yeah. Um, I really loved what it's brought me. I just don't think it's ever something I want to do full time, mm -hmm. but I do have like metrics and goals and things I want to hit. I do want to like continue to grow my channel and do stuff with it, but I just don't think I'd ever want it to be my, uh, my only gig. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. So do you, do you do shorts at all? Or do you like do short clips from your, your videos and just post them on shorts? I don't do shorts. And that's, oh. that's like the way people get a lot of subscribers on uh, YouTube is the shorts. Yes. Yep. But what I will say is what I've noticed is channels that have a ton of subscribers from shorts, they don't do well with the videos, the long form videos. They don't do as well. A lot of that. Yeah. I mean, in the beginning for me, I did, yeah. I had a, I had a couple shorts that hit over a million views Wow. and, and then I got like over like 1000 subscribers and, um, I, yeah, like recently, like lately I've been seeing more of an uptick on like, you know, views with my long form content. And yeah. so, and like, I, I go super heavy on YouTube. Like I do with, with this podcast, like our, our podcast, I'll do like one full video and then like mm -hmm. four shorts Yeah. throughout the whole week. And then I mm -hmm. do, I do um, like short form podcasts. And then what I'll do is I'll do a short almost every single day. And then I'll do, uh, I'm trying to do like more posts for the, the community posts. So yeah. I'm just trying to grow that, but it's just, yeah, it, it in the beginning, it was a little hard. Yeah. And then I, then I stopped doing shorts for a while and I didn't see an uptick in like, you know, subscribers or even views of my video. So I'm like, screw it. I'm just going to go back to doing what I was doing before. And you know, it, it's, it's doing pretty good so far. I've had a couple that are like over 500 V like 500 views. So I'm like, okay, yeah. I'll, I'll take it. So I think the people that are watching shorts are not necessarily the same people that are watching the no. long form videos. Yeah. So it's like, what, what are you like? You could, it, it depends on how much effort you want to put in and how much time you want to put in. You can definitely bring some of the short viewers. Like if you get a million views on a short, you are going to convert some of those viewers to long form viewers. 
but the percentage is not as high as most people would like it to be. I yeah. think like if you gain your viewers from long form viewers, those are the viewers that are going to watch the long form content. True. Yeah. And, and from the YouTube monetization perspective, um, I think most people can benefit more monetarily the long form. from the long form. And you have to have the viewers who want to sit there and watch the long form to benefit. Yeah. So you can get yeah. like this crazy like subscriber bump from having a uh, short go viral, but it doesn't always benefit you as much as if you were just to focus on trying to not necessarily you, but anyone focus on trying to get longer form content that the right viewers are going to want to watch. Yeah. And that's, and that's why I do the four shorts, yeah, including the long form, because I know, I know if, if you got to be like, you know, really dedicated to watch of like a YouTube, you know, podcast video. And so that's why I clip out like the main important one, like the, mm -hmm. the important sections of it. And obviously every, every, every minute of the podcast is important, but mm -hmm. like, you know, the ones that may get the listeners or listeners or, or the viewers to watch and see the whole thing. So yeah. that's why I cut them up in four. And so I'll, I'll get, I'll literally get the bump and views with the full and then get even more bumps and views for mm -hmm. the shorts. So it's kind of like a win-win for me. Yeah. There's, I think there could be definitely be a benefit in doing shorts. I have done a couple and seen some bumps from them, but for me, I like the long form content. It's what I enjoy doing more. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. And because it's, because for me, like YouTube is, really like just like a labor of love it's just like i it's my passion project mm. i don't want to be doing things i don't care as much about true just for like the numbers because like i don't i would like the numbers for myself and to continue to share like how much i love crossfit and how it's changed my life like i would like more numbers for that but i don't want to do it at the expense of burning myself out on things that don't bring me as much joy mm. So I just would rather people find the content that I enjoy making that I feel passionate about and the content that I think is my best work. 